Sarah, we finally have uh, this result unanimous. We only needed six out of the eight votes, but it was unanimous amongst the uh, courts, uh, the, the judges, I should say, in the Constitutional Court. Yeah, it was unanimous and it was much faster than we had expected, about 25 minutes from the start of, of this uh, case. Uh, we saw Justice Lee jong -mi just read out the final verdict. Uh, it was kind of the same amount of time that it took for former President No Mu Hyun's impeachment case back in 2004. So what happens from now would be the question while well, elections will be held within uh, 60 days. We are expecting now acting President Hwang kyo won to announce the date of the election. But uh, we have to think about the reasons behind this unanimous decision. Uh, now Justice Lee jong mi just explaining uh, to the public public uh, why President Park geun had to be removed from office. Uh, they were saying that President Park had continuously violated laws, that she had uh, hidden uh, Choi Soon shils influence in state affairs. Now, remember, Choi Soon shil is a close confidant of uh, President Park geun and uh, they were accused of colluding uh, in order to get bribes and also abusing President Park's uh, power. So in this regard, uh, the court saying that President Park violated the Constitution, that she abused uh, power, the power of the, pre the presidential power for Che Soon Shil's interests. And also, they did mention that President Park's impeachment could not rely on her response to the ferry disaster, the Sewol ferry disaster a couple of years back that took the lives of so many and caused so much public anger against her. That's not why this impeachment went ahead, but it was because of the reasons of colluding with her close friend and accepting bribes and abusing her power, among other charges. And now this means going forward that they will have to call an election that will have take place before May 9th. That would be uh, 60 days from today. Show very quickly here as well. Well, of course, this is just a confirmation of her impeachment. She can't run again. So who's likely to be the next president? Is there any front runner at the moment? Yeah, so we're seeing Moon Jae-in, who's uh, the part of the main opposition Democratic Party, uh, being the front runner right now, according to Gallup polls showing that he has more than 30 percent of the support of, of the country. Now, even if he's a front runner, though, the Democratic Party will need to uh, uh, actually select their own candidate. So that could lead to uh, primaries, even a runoff, if uh, they don't have a majority of the votes. Now, the second most favorite right now is the Democratic Party's An Hee Jong as well, governor of South Chungcheong province. He has about of support in South Korea. Now, when it comes to the president's ruling uh, Senuri Party, the old Senuri Party, right now rebranded as Liberty Korea, they're in disarray. They're pinning their hopes on uh, the acting president. Hwang kyo -won. But either way, uh, either way, uh, whoever the next president... All right, we seem to have lost Sherry for now, but certainly you're seeing uh, the turnout of Koreans on the streets in front of the Constitutional Court, as well as that security response there. Uh, we have seen, of course, rounds and rounds, weekend after weekend of protests uh, culminating in that parliamentary vote in December to have President Park Geun-hye impeached. And then, of course, that triggered the decision for the Constitutional Court to consider whether they would uphold that. And in the last few minutes or so, we have had the delivery of that judgment the ruling unanimously, 8 to 10, the justices on the Constitutional Court ruling to uphold that decision to impeach, to remove President Park Geun-hye from office and, of course, triggering that uh, election within the next 60 days. Uh, we seem to have Sherry back now. So I want to ask you, Sherry, you know, you, you see the people out in the streets. Uh, there was that element of, of, I guess, what the populace wanted, uh, which was change, which was maybe a new leaf. Uh, is this likely to appease some of that sentiment? I mean, what are you sort of hearing being there on the ground? 
The fact is that when we're talking about protests in South Korea, there were both sides for and against President Park being removed. Some of those against this impeachment motion have said that these illegal procedures had to stop. Now, the ones that wanted President Park gone, they will be having celebratory gatherings tonight and tomorrow as well. So we're not expecting uh, the crowds to disperse anytime soon, even with President Park being impeached. They had said that they would stay out on the streets to celebrate uh, this new beginning for South Korea. Yeah, and Sherry, it's interesting. We've now seen the Cosby uh, essentially <laughs> return to being a little changed, giving back very quickly those initial gains, that initial pop that we saw after the uh, verdict came through. Uh, now, in terms of the markets, I mean, there are a lot of uncertainties. Goldman Sachs with that note saying, look, the political uncertainties domestically, as well as these geopolitical tensions, it's a pretty tough time for whoever takes over now in the leadership. Yeah, it is. I mean, despite what the markets are doing, and remember, the Cosby has been pretty resilient, up more than 4% in dollar terms. Uh, since the impeachment motion passed the National Assembly on December 9th, despite what the markets are doing, uh, the sense here in South Korea is that consumer confidence has been hit. What that means is that people are not going out to spend. We are expecting uh, the slowest pace of growth for this year since 2012, at 2.5%, according to the Bank of Korea. Remember, uh, this is a country that's reeling with record levels of household debt. What that means is that the BOK can't really do much, cannot cut rates in order to stimulate the economy. Also, because of the yield different differentials with the U.S. rates and South Korea, with the U.S. being ready to hike rates, South Korea does not want to risk more capital outflow. So this is a country that has very few options when it comes to monetary policy options. What that means is that the fiscal side will have to play in and try to boost the economy. And remember, unemployment rates here, okay, not, they're okay for the rest of the population, but when it comes to uh, the people under 30 years of age, the unemployment rate is double that of the whole nation. So a lot of people here on the ground, especially young people who can't get a job, they're calling the situation hell. Oh, it's a, it's a perfect storm there in a lot of ways. Uh, Sherry, I'm curious, though, we've been talking about what happens to the country, what happens to the leadership role now that it's been vacated, now that she's been removed. But what happens to uh, the former president, Park Geun-hye? Hey, are we expecting to hear from her? I mean, where do we go from here for her? We had heard from local media reporting on President Park's lawyer saying that she will accept the ruling of the court. So we don't know when we could hear from her, but the, uh, the feeling here on the ground is that she will do as the court says. And now what this means for her is that she could uh, get charged, she could be arrested as she loses not only her power but also her immunity as a president of South Korea.